So in this video, we're gonna talk about the abstract non-singular curl associated to a function field of transcendence degree 1. To motivate this, let us fix a field letter k, and recall that to every k variety x, we could associate a um, reduced finitely generated k algebra, namely the function field of x. It gives us a way to study x algebraically. A natural question would be, um, can we go the other way around? That is, could we recover the variety x from its function field? Well, unfortunately not, because for example, the cups curve here actually has the same function field as the um, line P1. In other words, x here, this cups curve is birational to P1, and the birational map could be given by sending every point P to the line through the origin and P, viewing as an element of P1. If we want to th think in terms of the affine piece instead, then we can think of this map as sending every point P here, right, to the slope of this line through the origin and P. This gives a birational map between the cups curve and P1. Okay, so X and P1 are birational. They have the same function field, but they are actually not isomorphic. And you can check that by checking their coordinate ring. The coordinate rings are not going to be isomorphic. The details will be discussed in another video, which I will try to link in the description. So we see that in general, this is not possible. We cannot recover the variety uniquely up to isomorphism from its function field, even in the case of curve. Right? However, if uh, we restrict only to non-singular curves, then it's indeed possible to recover the variety from the function field. In other words, the function field of non-singular curves determine the curve uniquely up to isomorphism. Observe that this example does not apply because this curve here is not non-singular, and that was the only obstruction. So here's our plan. We set an underlying ground field K that is algebraically closed, and given a function field big K over little K of transcendence degree 1, we want to show that there exists a unique projective non-singular curves over little k with function field big K. And here's the spoiler. So this curve in CK here is going to be, as a set, the set of discrete valuation rings right, that are contained between little k and big K. Now, so that's a bit confusing, right? What does it mean for a set of discrete valuation rings to be a curve? That's not a curve in the sense that we're used to, right? So what we'll do is that we'll put on this a topology and a structure sheaf, right? And then we will extend the category of varieties to include such objects. These objects, we call them the abstract non-singular curves. So we'll adjoin these to the category of varieties, and then we'll show that every non-singular quasi-projective curve in the usual sense is actually isomorphic to an abstract curve. And conversely, every such abstract curve is also isomorphic to a non-singular curve in the usual sense. Alright, so that's the rough plan. Now you might wonder, why, why discrete valuation ring? This definition seems kind of random. Well, in the next video, we're going to explain where this definition comes from.